imagine your favourite film being cut in half. It's not fair. In a perfect world, the Snyder Cut is released and it explodes. I have no idea what the opening of this video is going to look like, but I really hope it was sentimental and awesome. Hello there, people of the universe. My name is Mike Sfy, and the moment has finally arrived. The Zack Snyder's Justice League discussion. Now, I'm not sure if this video is going to be four hours long or fucking longer, but I will try my best to not ramble, which is really, really difficult because this film means an awful lot to me. That's something else that I hope comes across in the opening montage, slide, video, whatever it is, I hope that comes across in that. If not, then I'm sure it'll come across in what I'm saying. So let's start by pointing out the obvious. My DC Blu-ray collection, bar Wonder Woman 84, is complete. Technically not, because I'm still missing Wonder Woman 84, but for so long, I was missing Justice League. Not because I hadn't had a chance to buy it like Wonder Woman 84. No, because the only version available wasn't the, wasn't the correct version, and I refused to buy it. But here we are in May 2021. Not only have I seen it twice, which that alone... See, seeing it once on its own is mesmerizing getting to sit down and watch it the full four hours on a 4k tv i only bought this tv for the snyder cut obviously i've watched a few films on it as well like fast and furious uh hobbs and shaw uh what else uh la llorona hopefully oh i said that hopefully i said that right uh or the curse of la llorona i didn't say it right that time uh, and then loads of other things but the main reason was for the snyder cut i think i was brought to tears at least three times while watching it because fi finally getting to watch something that me and thousands, maybe millions more have campaigned for. And what we've been told by people, oh, it doesn't exist. Oh, if it does, it won't come out. And shut up. Get in the bin. It always existed and it was always going to get released. Because fans like me and thousands more were not going to give up. Because as a wise man said, I don't care how many demons he's fought in how many hells. Warner Brothers have never fought us. Not as United. Oh, I, I, I love the cover art they've gone with so much. I fucking hate the one on the steel book, but I'm not getting that. Cause the one with the hands and stuff, it's just so plain. The back where it's a mother box, that looks cool, but the front is just so fucking plain. It, it's really hard. What, what was the thing we did in the other videos? Best moment, best... I, I don't remember. Best moment, favourite moment. Right. Well, it's four hours, so it's fucking hard to do that with this film. Fuck. Um, oh, fuck. Okay, favourite moment. I'm definitely going to say... Oh, it's it's really tricky. It's really tricky. Um, Favourite moment. I'm going to say the tunnel fight. Just that whole scene in general. If I have to say a specific scene, the, the bit where Batman's dodging the lasers and they're like, he goes... Fsoom, 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 like that whole... And then he goes, my god, look, what? He goes, celebrate later on in the Nightcrawler. Thought you'd never ask. Like that... That whole sequence, and then the, my turn. That whole, <laughs> sorry. That whole sequence is, actually, no, you know what, I'm not sorry. That whole sequence is fucking amazing. Like, and then when um, Diana attacks the parademon, and he goes, Amazon, and then they have that little look, and it's like, is he going to go for his act? And then when he goes for it, and she spears him, and the music starts, and then when she breaks through the wall, and then like, as she flips, the way the camera follows, and then when she lands with the last one, she lands and she puts it behind and then gets the sword at the way she like spins it round. There were so many moments where she'd use a sword, but backwards, like a circuit does with a lightsaber. And it was so... I, it's hard to explain, but there were so many moments where all the characters, they, for a team-up film, all members of the League, Superman as well, got a moment... Where, where it was just them. Superman, it was when he was kicking the fuck out of Steppenwolf. Like, when he blocks the axe, he goes, Nah, impress. And then when he slowly rises up, breaks the axe, 
and he fucking boots him. Like, oh my god. I don't know what it is, but the black and silver suit just makes it look so much better. Don't get me wrong, I love the blue and red, but something about that suit, the way he rises up slowly, fucking incredible. And as I mentioned, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, oh. I'm not going to say epic, I'm, gonna, I'm instead going to say heartwarming. In terms of epic, I'm going to say the bit where he separates when he goes inside the unit. In terms of heartwarming, which is my favourite cyborg moment, the bit when he's understanding his powers and he gives that woman a load of cash so she can live, that alone is reason to why cyborg should have a solo film and as well why he should stay on in The Flash. Aquaman, um... Oh, the bit when he does what he's trying to goes, knock, knock, and he goes, HEY! The way he moves with his tried and because uh, I just recently watched Aquaman again, and there's so many moments where he's moving his tried, and I'm like, it feels like a progression from Zack Snyder's Justice League, Batman, um, the tunnel, everything about Batman. There's a, there's a moment when Superman's resurrected and, he, and he's attacking, and there's an army soldier on the floor, and Batman goes to him and he goes, "Get up, take cover over there." So subtle, it just works. And then as well, the bit where. Um, he confronts Superman at Heroes Park. None of this shit about, tell me, do you bleed? No, none of that shit. Instead, Superman lays his Batman. He blocks it, then gets sent back to the car. He goes, clock. And there's a moment where Superman rises above him. And it's a direct parallel to BVS. It's fucking brilliant. And had this come out in 2017, the year after, it would have been fucking amazing. Oh, it's so incredible. But just before he does that, though, he goes, clock. The world needs you. But he, he do, the scene is done where, in a way where Batman doesn't need to look like a bitch for Superman to clearly be the dominant one. Like, in the in, in Whedon's crap, he goes, The world needs you. But in Zack's, he just looks at me and goes, Clock, the world needs you. And he doesn't say, But does it need you? No, it, there's no need for that. Like, he doesn't bitch slap him, no. When Batman flings back into the car, it's because he's deflecting the laser, and then, I don't know if Superman, like, increases it, but, like, he does, like, that, and then, obviously, the beam, what's already going, when he does that, another beam shoots, like, say, he's increasing the intensity, then it finally sends him back, because, obviously, the gauntlet can only do so much. Alfred, he's not, he's not a member of the League, but he fucking should be. Um, he's incredible. Uh, but in terms of Flash, now, that's where we come to the best moment in the film. The second best moment is the moment. I'm saying moment 75 times. Is the moment where it's just after um, Wonder Woman saved Batman. You know when the Parademons open the car. It's just after that. Like it, it, it's the, it's this. This is a freeze frame of it, and then this is a freeze frame of my reaction to that moment. That moment of the entire league. Fucking incredible. Um, but in terms of best moment overall of the film, it's Barry's into the Speed Force part. When the unity synchronizes, dark side is here, and then the world explodes. And like that's it. We're done. End credits. And Barry freezes time, cause obviously because for the for the flash it's slower. And he looks over. And not only the acting and the cinematography, but the music by Junkie XL is fucking incredible. It's I don't want to play it because copyright, but you need to listen to it. You need to, you need to watch this entire fucking film. It doesn't feel like four hours. The only time it feels that long is when you get to two hours, and you're at the you're at the tunnel fight, and then you realise, hang about, Whedon's cut was fucking done by now. Now, if you're like my girlfriend and my friend, and you've never seen Whedon's cut, good, don't, do not waste your fucking time. And my friend Ben, he has the Blu-ray of it, and I can't wait come November when he throws that bastard on a bonfire. If he does it, I will do a video and I will show you the footage if he sends it me. Because I want him to fucking burn it. Now, if you have the weeding cut, you don't need to burn it. But if you do, tell me. But yeah, that whole sequence of the Flash where he, instead of pushing a fucking truck and then goes, Doj Toyes, Do whatever he says in Russian, I think, I think it's farewell. Doj Toyevsky, I can't, I can't say it, I'm sorry. Um, instead of that, or instead of the fucking brunch or landing on Diana in a cringe fucking inappropriate moment. Instead of that, he saves the world. The one he goes, I want you to remember, Dad, your kid was one of them, one of the best of the best. Brilliant. And I won't lie, I do love Grant Gustin's Flash, but ever since Justice League, I'm sorry, Ezra has taken the lead in Best Flash. Ezra, he hasn't even had his solo film, he's just shined in Justice League. Zack Snyder's Justice League. And being honest, I can't find any fault with the film. I can't, and I know that sounds incredibly biased, but genuinely, I have. Ch I I went into the film thinking, right, 
something like this has got to be bad. But it isn't. Yeah, there's a bit too. Sl there is a lot of slow motion, but that's not bad. That's just Zack Snyder loves slow motion. If you don't, well, then that's going to bug you. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, Wonder Woman, they have a habit of sh of playing a certain... I don't know if it's choir, but, like, um, operatic... No, no, I don't know if it's... Op like, they have a certain piece of music that play... They have a certain piece of music that, music that does play a lot with Wonder Woman. Yeah, but it never feels... Every time I heard it, I got, I got, I got like, goosebumps. And, yeah, you could say it is used a lot. But is that a bad thing? For you, maybe, but... I, I didn't think it was a bad thing. Like, as I said, I, I tried to find fault with the film. I've tried to look at bits like, okay, maybe that should have been different. But honestly, no. Should Martian Manhunter maybe turned up a bit earlier? I would have liked that. I would have liked if he was stood on um the 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 cold, the smoke tower, the, 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 the thing at the end. It would have been nice, but it wouldn't have worked well because it's like, oh, he's there with the team. So when would you when would you have placed scenes for him to get to know the team and be actually a part of it? Yeah, that's true. So while I get it, it makes sense. And then obviously I don't, I won't even get into the fucking epilogue. Batman and the Joker didn't even share one punch, just dialogue, and it was fucking incredible. Think the interrogation scene of the Dark Knight, right? That isn't bad because of when Batman does start punching the fuck out of him. No, the reason that scene is so good is because of Christian and Heath, rest his soul. Their acting and their dialogue, and obviously Christopher Nolan's directing and everything, is what makes that scene. Same in Zack Snyder's Justice League, but it's not... Because for me, quick comparison, the Dark Knight, great film. Um... But the interrogation scene isn't... Now, hear me out here. It isn't the Batman... It isn't Batman and the Joker. No, it is instead an agent of chaos and an agent of justice talking. That doesn't mean they're not Batman and the Joker, but just go, go with me here. Whereas in the Zack Snyder's Justice League scene between them, the things they say... If you've even read one comic... That scene just screams Batman and the Joker. Now, again, I'm not saying the Dark Knight isn't Batman and Joker. No, of course not. But the Dark Knight trilogy trilogy is meant to be a more realistic look on the Dark Knight, on Batman. And it's brilliant. I love the Dark Knight trilogy. I've got it on, I've got it on DVD over there. It's brilliant. I love those films. Heath Ledger, great Joker. But what I loved, the way they did him in the Dark Knight, is he's very much an agent of chaos. And that scene is brilliant. And I don't want to sound like I'm saying, oh, it isn't Batman. No, of course it is, but... It's really hard to explain, but hopefully someone knows what I mean. If you don't, that's totally fine. And, yeah, as I said, it's, it's, I can't find fault with the film. I've tried. I have really tried. But I can't. Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is a beautiful film. I won't say perfect because that is subjective. For someone who hates superhero films, this will not be perfect. But for me, I think it's fucking perfect. The only problem with this film is Warner Brothers refusing to acknowledge its existence. Which, yeah, because that ended well the first time. No, it didn't. It got it. We got it released. We will get sequels. So Warner Brothers, just fucking back down. So yeah, I'm. I am gonna wrap this video up here now. Wrap this video up now. Does that even make sense? Um, but yeah, Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Ray Fisher, Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, Ray Fisher. They all did fucking incredible. And Zack Snyder, thank you so much for pushing through the shit the studio gave you and finishing this film. Because it was fucking brilliant. And it bothers me because I've not talked about a lot of things like The Atom, um, or Ryan Choi, Steppenwolf, Darkseid, Dessard, The Parademons, The Amazon fight scene... There's so much I still haven't talked about because it's it's really tricky. And even Amber Heard's moments, they're all right. I'm not a fan of her at all, but until further notice, she's Mira. So I know if some people like me, it's hard to separate the actor and the character. But if you can, then there you go. And as well, she's in the epilogue, which is new footage. Zack hasn't got the power to fire her. So people giving Zack shit for that, just fuck off. Uh, and then as well, oh, Luthor and Deathstroke... There's still so much I want to fucking talk about, but I need to wrap this up. Everyone in it, Batman, Superman, um, Cyborg, The Flash, Diana, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, um, Alfred, Lois, Martha, Martian Manhunter, 
Dark Side, Steppenwolf, Dessard, um, Mira, uh, Volcor, because he's in it, um, Hippolyta. Oh, and then the fucking history lesson. Oh, it is so tricky to talk about this film without going on for the long, the fucking length of the film. But put it this way. I love this film so much. Not only did I get this, but I then went a step further and got this one. This is brilliant. This will be in the next episode of Arkham Knight. I'll be wearing it, which is tricky because if you look, I've got bum muscles. So that's going to be interesting to sit down in. I've invested so much time, money, love, dedication into this film. It's brilliant. And if you can't watch it in full four hours, that's totally fine. But I really think it is worth watching the full four hours in one go. And my girlfriend, Lucy, who is a Marvel fan predominantly, she has gone through every DC film, at least, Man of Steel, BVS, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and then Aquaman the other day. And she was saying to me, Aquaman's definitely her second favourite, but Justice League still reigns true. And the reason I mentioned isn't because she was a Marvel, she's a Marvel fan. No, what I mean is someone who isn't really into these films as much. She gave them a chance. And when I told her with Justice League, there's no plans for a sequel. She was fucking, she was like, what? And yeah, exactly. But she enjoyed it. I adore the film and I've got to give a big thank you. Because um, when I watched it, I watched it with uh, Lewis, Callum, James, Laura. And then the final person I'm going to give a big thank you to, Ben. I don't have many people who I can talk to about this stuff because it's not many. It's not a lot of people's thing, which is totally fine. That's why I appreciate Lucy giving it a, giving it a chance. But me and Ben, we've been campaigning. We've been a part of this. And then when I made a video last year saying about how it was the video called Release the Snyder Cut, it was the same day they announced it. Um, and I remember I talked about it and after uploading the video and scheduling it, I remember I just felt down all of a sudden. I don't know why. And then about a few hours later, after I'd have a, had a nap, Ben rung me, screaming. He said, get on Discord. And he showed me the announcement and I screamed for an hour. Not even joking. So, Ben, if you're watching, it has meant the world to me, mate, going through this journey with you, watching it with you. Getting phones from phone calls from you saying, wake the fuck up, there's a new trailer. Getting things on Instagram sent to you about the Snyder Cut. Me sending you things. Uh, one of us telling the other, oh, I've already seen that. Like, we tell each other in all caps, seen. And, like, when the film came out, I said to him, because he was at school, and I said, do you want me to wait for you? Because I will, if you want me to. I do want to watch it, but if you want me to wait, I will. And he said, if you don't mind, I said, oh, then I will wait. And I did. I enjoyed watching it with everyone. There were so many moments during the film where I was like, Oh, Ben! Ben! Like, he can validate that. Um, I intend to buy the normal Blu-ray because I want to keep the 4K Ultra HD version sealed. But because I've got a 4K TV, but obviously watching a Blu-ray on 4K isn't the same as watching a 4K Ultra HD on a 4K TV. So I'm probably going to buy the Blu-ray because this was 25 quid. The normal Blu-ray is 15. I also need to get the BVS 4K remaster, which is 20 quid. And then I'm probably going to buy another one of this copper to watch. Because this is staying sealed. Which is annoying because it looks so nice. Like with the, like the black rim around the top. It looks so nice. And having, obviously, Zack's story isn't a trilogy. It's a panthology of five films. But having, for now, the trilogy. Seeing Superman's arc across the three, three films. And then Batman's arc across these two. It's brilliant, and I will continue fighting for sequels and the restoration of the Snyderverse, but if it doesn't happen, then Warner Brothers, you're out of your fucking minds. But, again, Zach, if you ever see this, thank you so much. And thank you to every fan who tweeted. And thank you to every single one of you guys who has endured me ranting about this film, or if you've enjoyed it as well. It, either way, it means the world, because... I've enjoyed talking about this film in so many videos. So many videos we're playing in the Arkham games. I, I love it. I've enjoyed going through the DC films and doing discussions. Obviously, we're not done yet. There's still loads more. But as I say, it, I, it just feels right watching the film now and then watching Aquaman after it. Like watching them in order, at least story order, not release. It came out 2021, obviously. But watching them in story order. Like watching BVS, Wonder Woman, or well, BVS, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, then, Justice, like, then Zack Snyder's Justice League. It just feels right. 
And the only thing I'd change is I wish I could be like Lucy and Lewis where they never saw the weeding cut. Like Lucy got to watch them one after the other. She didn't have to wait three years like me and so many others did. And I, I wish I could be like that, but yeah. Brilliant film. And I'm probably going to watch it again at some point. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye. I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet, you not get the message. From the moment that I'm stepping in, I get a couple weapons. Yeah, I turn to a beast when I'm repping. I'm a living legend.